What's up, everybody? My name is Sebastian Maniscalco. This is Dr. Scott Cohen. This is Daddy versus Doctor. We're going to jump right into the bag. See what's right, going we on. Got, on we the got somebody bag. from our hometown of LA, Jenny and Melissa. And they would like to know how do you balance screen time? When is it too young? When is it too much? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to when I was a kid with screen time. Yeah. Screen time back then was the t TV. Yeah. TV was don't sit too close to the TV. Okay. Your eye, your eyes are gonna okay. go Let's back. Okay, we'll go back to that. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't know if that was a myth mm -hmm. or what that was, just to scare the shit out mm -hmm. of us. But I moved back from the TV because I thought my eyes were gonna go. Mm -hmm. Um. We watched Saturday morning cartoons mm -hmm. religiously. Yeah. I remember it started with the Flintstones, Scooby Doo, the, that old yeah. He Man. That ran its course. So that that's at least I'm thinking whew, two and a half hours Saturday mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. right in front of the TV. And then periodically throughout the week, I had TV shows that I watched, right. whether it be Three's Company, Cheers. This is, of course, getting into my eight, nine, 10, 11 mm -hmm. year old. I don't know. Any, five years old, I don't really remember yeah. a lot of TV. So now we have the phone, mm -hmm. quote unquote, screen time, iPads, computer, what have you. Is it the stuff that kids have access to now is far detrimental to the development process than it was when we were growing up? They could stumble upon a I don't know, uh, uh, whatever's on the internet, a car accident, a murder, someone beating the shit out of a, the, 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 the McDonald's manager. There's a lot of these videos. Yeah. And you're not online as much as I am. Yeah. But there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of these videos where there seems to be a problem with the order. <laughs> at a fast food restaurant? At a fast food restaurant. Yeah. Pick anyone, Taco Bell, McDonald's yeah. in it. And the next thing you know, the customer has jumped over the counter and is beating the shit out of the entire staff. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this. So I don't want Serafina or Caruso coming across a video like that, yes. thinking that's an right. option when something goes bad right. at a at a at a restaurant. So that being said, are we scared mm -hmm. of them stumbling upon these things, or? What is it? Us losing control? Yeah. What what do you what do you think it I mean, is? I think it's all those things. I think it's content, not, you know, seeing something we shouldn't see. So that's why we talked about contact controls. I think it's usage and just sheer ability to interact with all of these, you know, video games, iPhones, TVs. Like you said, I had the same childhood. We had four channels. We had four, five, seven, nine, and I think twenty if the antenna ears was working. And it was Thursday night comedy night, right? It was those four half an hour comedy shows we knew and Saturday morning cartoons. And that was pretty much it. Um, but now your access, it's so easy to just pick it up and go. And then the other problem is, we've talked about this the last couple of years, kids didn't have the ability to interact, socialize with one another in person. So unfortunately, these devices became the only means of socialization. And as a parent, especially of two almost, you know, teenagers, that became a hard thing because you're going to limit their only ability to socialize with another human being their age because they can't leave the house, they can't go to school. And that's a tough thing, right? Mm -hmm. You want to set limits, but at the same time, you don't want to limit that. Um, so, we, you know, we, we try to create some sort of standard. So, you know, we typically say no screen time prior to the age of two. And if you're in the 18 month to two year range, you know, you really try to limit it. And if you're going to do it, you try to do it with the child because 3D learning is always going to be 2D learning. So if you can sit there and at least discuss, look at the blue circle, look at the green, you know, triangle. I learned from Sesame Street. I think my girls did too. So you can learn things from that. And then after two, we try to limit it to at least an hour, a uh, minimum of an hour a day which is really hard as they get older when they're doing homework on the screen and they're talking to their friends. Um, but really trying to figure out how they're using it and giving breaks because we know excessive screen time, what does it do? It affects sleep. So you try to <clears throat> limit it, at least stop it for an hour before bedtime. It definitely affects sleep. 
we know it does affect learning, it affects socialization, it can lead to obesity. So all these negative effects of it. So finding positive ways to use it. Um, you mentioned like going, you know, cross-eyed if you're sitting too close. So they came out with uh, sort of guidelines for that. They say 20, 20, 20. It's a good one, like 20, 20 vision, but 20, 20, 20. So every 20 minutes you're on the screen, mm -hmm. look 20, 20 feet away mm -hmm. for at least 20 seconds. And what they found is because your eyes get really tired when you're staring at a screen, leads to dry eyes, there may be some thoughts that could lead to myopia or nearsightedness. So giving your eyes a break every once in a while can help them rest. Blinking frequently will help the dry eyes and may help prevent those things. Okay. Now, you say positive things that, yeah. that technology has offered. I have often thought, and, and again, I, I, let me touch a little bit on video games. Video games yeah. growing up, very simple. Mm -hmm. Pac-Man, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, mm -hmm. Pitfall Harry. Yeah. Uh, I remember Pitfall Harry. I remember Pitfall. Yeah, Pitfall right, Harry. Yeah. The, the 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 biggest thing was the rope. Yeah, that was it. You swing, and you get in the and, sand, and then you the quick you sand. The yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that game. Right. Yeah. Now the video games, you could like murder an entire right. village, right, with yeah. an Oculus glass, and you feel like you're in the yeah. game, right? And I don't know if there's any studies of yeah. of correlating high video game violence mm -hmm. to uh, going out and and using uh, a weapon on people. I don't know, but I, I would have to think if they eliminated uh, smoking in commercials, mm -hmm. right? The, because it was influenced people. Right. To Lim smoke, limit the violence. They have to in limit the, the violence in, in the video games. So that has to be in consideration. Also, I want to I want to get your take on this, and this is more of an educational question. Is it really a need for the kids to be learning math in school? Okay, and okay. Uh, hear, hear me out. All right, that really took a turn. Ooh, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> so th there's some arguments being made mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a lot of things that are accessible online mm -hmm. that we didn't have growing up, so we had to learn, Right. right? But when, you know, if, if 10 plus 10, if you don't know 10 plus right. 10, you go on the internet and, or you go to Siri, what's 10 plus 10? You and get you, get, you get, so <laughs> is it, is it your brain just working through the problem mm -hmm. is what, what it's teaching you, not necessarily the answer? Yeah, I really think that's the case because. You're right. Most things we learn, you, you gave math as an example. You're not using calculus or trigonometry. You know, you're not using these things in regular life. I mean, yeah. if you know how to do a tip, uh, that's pretty much upper level math, all you need in life. And again, you could look up, put it in your 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 iPhone. But it's you're not doing it just to learn the answers. You're learning it to form connections in your brain, mm -hmm. to learn a process of how to think um, and a, and a skill set. So I think that's what's really important. Could it be substitute with other things? Maybe. But like, if you're going to say that, then we should all just put microchips in our brains, learn nothing, and it just Google feeds us our answers. But I think there's a process involved, and it's good for that those brain connections to learn. Do you think the pendulum has swung so far to technology side where there's really no hope and no fighting it? Uh, and because we often talk about the kids are not having human interaction, mm -hmm. they're not connecting with people on a, a, on a human level. It's all through technology. Do you think we're going to see the pendulum swing back where those connections are going to be, you know, reinstated in our society, or do you just see us walking around like a bunch of cyborgs? No. I mean, I hope it does actually swing back, and I think the last two years is a good example of that, where we spend so much time on computers and. People are like, people don't want, you know, remember when the pandemic started and everybody was like, this is great working from home. I'm never going back to the office. Why would ever? And the second they were able to, they're like, yeah, I'm actually, I, it's sort of nice going and seeing people in person, having meetings and having coffee like this and not just doing it on screen. So I think there's, there's something to, we savor that human connection and we need it. And I would hope that it swings back. Did you miss it? I mean, come on. Man. No, I, I definitely, I, I missed it. Right. I'm just you weren't saying, doing shows. Well, I wasn't doing shows. We weren't having the get togethers or right. what have you. But my fear is the kids that are growing up like yeah. this, they don't even know any other way but this. Uh, so I fear that 
you know, this might be just the norm moving forward is, okay, you know, you want to break up with me, you do it on text, you want to, uh, everything's done through email. We just saw it in, in one of the shows where the kid was like, I do a text message because I don't want to see the people's face right. when I'm talking to them. That's like a frightening Yeah, but that's why uh, it's statement. so important to put the phones down, have family time where you're eating meals together and the phone isn't there. I mean, my wife would be like pot calling the kettle black right now, but we try our best and you need those times where you're doing the one-on-one -on -one making eye contact because you're right. I think one, kids lost a lot of that last couple of years. They just don't know how to interact. They don't know how to look somebody in the face. They don't know how to respond. If, if you say something to me and I make a face, what that means to you, we learn that way. Mm -hmm. And they really need those interactions. We have to give them the ability to have those experiences outside of the screen time. <music>